Oh, wow, that's an interesting looking sword, Eli. <laughs> Look, I'll get back to making the sword soon. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. I wanted to make an axe though. That fake little weapon test that I did in that last video had me thinking like, hey, this uh, rebar handle with the big old spring steel blade kind of slaps, not gonna lie. Rebar handle got me thinking of these uh, rebar axes that pretty much every uh, blacksmith who's ever even thought of Smith in the Black has made at least one of. So I had to think to myself, how can I just, just improve it a little bit? I mean, do something different. I'm not, I'm not, I would never say improve. No, 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 this is just different. I also made this one very epically cute. This was the prototype. And this is the uh, other prototype. I still have to make another one for the video. So we're definitely getting back to the sword right after this. This was a nice break from thinking about sword things at all. As I said, spring steel blade, the handle, which I have shaped into the silhouette of like a regular ax handle is uh, made of some half inch rebar, but the next one that I make, the real one is gonna be three eighth inch. <laughs> The handle is uh, made of some 3 8 inch rebar, but the next one that I make, the real one, is gonna be some half inch rebar. So this twist here should be a little bit tighter. The handle, even though it looks like a freaking tennis racket handle, it's actually genuine pigskin. You know we're fancy around here. Come on, guys. So here's this uh, rebar spring steel war axe. Hope you guys like it. Would you believe me if I told you we're starting with a leaf spring? From the truck. Gotta pop this apart real quick. And I kind of doubt you guys can see it from there, but trust me, these springs have kind of a uh, distal taper to them. I need as much material as I can get for this particular build. So we're gonna take a chunk out from right next to the middle. And now as cool as the ax is, it's not particularly wieldy. For the length of it, the head is, uh, I was gonna say a little too big, but it's, it's way too big. I used 10 inches of the leaf spring to make this thing. So I'm gonna go with eight inches this time. Now, same deal as last time, I'm gonna weld this rebar handle onto it. This'll make it so that at least for the first half of the build, I won't have to be messing around with the blacksmithing tongs. All right, as soon as that thing comes out of the fire and it's glowing yellow, I'm gonna whack it. Yuck! Just smack it on the horn and that should put a bend in it. It might take a couple of heats, but we're gonna put a bend uh, five inches from the end of it. You're gonna notice that as we're bending it, it's gonna start to sort of warp like this. So I'm gonna bring it over here and flatten it back out. So in the end, we've got a right angle piece. The front is gonna be a little round, but I'll show you how we fix that. seconds not bad all right now that we got that right angle type beat we're gonna start squeezing out this portion which is gonna turn into this part you can kind of see how this is starting to take shape already now to get this part though is a little more complicated than you might think notice how this part right here just about as round as frick boy and on the finished one this is actually past a right angle a little bit it's actually upturned there's a little bit of a point to it you can see what i'm talking about on the big one a little better to achieve that because pinching and pulling out steel is i don't know if complicated is the right word maybe like a borderline impossible for me at this point at least at the same time time we're squeezing this part out to about half width by the way we're also going to be upsetting this end of the steel on the horn of the anvil upsetting is a process of heating up your material and smashing it the long way so it actually thickens up behold two pieces of steel of equal size i heat one up i smash it the long way and that is upsetting so by doing the upsetting on the horn of the anvil, the top corner takes its shape and you get that nice upturn and then for the spreading i'll get to that later so let's get this work done
that took a little longer than expected. What's it been? Oh my gosh, a month and a half? That's crazy. Don't worry guys, I'll never let that happen again. All right, so hopefully by now you can kind of see where we're going with this. Next step, we gotta hammer the bevel into the front side of the blade here. This will accomplish actually a lot of stuff. From doing that upsetting on the horn of the anvil, it really thickened up this section here. So the back edge of the blade that we're not beveling is gonna be super thick, super strong. But flattening out this whole section here, it's actually going to bring that point a little bit higher, give us a bit of a more hooky shape down here, and it'll bring the front edge forward some. Then we also gotta put the spike on the back. Oh, it'll also curl this back a little bit. So in the end, it should be vaguely shaped like this. I think I'm gonna thin this out some too, so we can get a longer spike. No, I'm sign. I don't really care that my head is that shiny. I'm just afraid you might be able to read my license plate and reflection. Wow, I look really cool. Okay, if you couldn't kind of tell already, you kind of portion out the rebar so that once you do the wrapping and the shaping of the handle, the point where you weld it together will be kind of hidden underneath the handle wrap, which, thank God. And you may notice that once you weld it all together, especially if you're still using the 3 8 inch, the handle will be kind of uh, squishy. If that's the case, a little bit of rebar does the trick. You just kind of slide it in there, weld it in. If you're having trouble getting it in there, a little bit of rebar does the trick. You just kind of use it to tap it in there. If that's a little rough on the hands, a little bit of rebar does the trick. Kind of pop it in there, it makes a great handle. So in the end, you got this. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, I got this. Maybe you will do it better. But with that, we're at a point where we can do the heat treating because we don't need heat for anything else. Yeah, from here, pretty much good. We got some regular old canola oil here. You gotta warm it up before you quench it. I used to shoot the side of it with a blowtorch until I realized that a little bit of rebar does the trick. Nice and warm. So I'm gonna do the spike first as opposed to the blade because whatever goes first is most likely to have the temper ruined by the other one getting tempered. And I honestly just care less about the spike. So we'll give it a dunk. Pro tip, make sure you don't fill up your quench tank to the brim before you quench. It really expands a lot when it heats up. Let me file test this real quick. Super hard. Hey, okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna let this cool off some. In the meantime, I'm gonna leave my forge running until all the coal burns out of it. By that point, all the fire bricks should be adequately hot and I should be able to temper the blade just by setting it in there and leaving it. A little unorthodox, but hey, I'm not Jewish. I'm not gonna spend way too much more time on that. Well, something comes to mind about uh, polishing a turd, but who can deny 
It's one shiny turd. Now the wrap on the first one is two layers of paracord and then the leather, but I honestly feel like it came out a little too chunky. And on top of that, this rebar is already thicker than this one. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna do one layer of paracord and then the leather. Frick. No, oh, whatever, I don't even like it anyways. Let's try it again. And finally, as the prophecy foretold, leather brick from a pig. And I'm going the traditional route, just as our ancient ancestors used to attach their leather to their paracord wrap rebar handles. We will be using Gorilla. Oh, what the heck? I thought this was something else. The uh, brand is Sponsor Me, ZNA Sponsorship at gmail.com. Huh. Well, I hope it's good. So you just put a little dot on one side, a little dot on the other side. Every time you go over, you go over half of the last layer. Oh shoot, dang. Look at that perfect landing. Oh shoot. It was meant to be, not gonna lie. Oh baby. Wiggling, epic. It's freaking B, dude. Oh my gosh, get out, B. Just let me get my thumbnail and go, man. All right, that's it, subscribe, bye.